Hello guys, welcome here to another edition of Out of Turn 4, and this is the episode where I am not yet, not yet, as I'm recording, blocked by Ty Gibbs. Um, <laughs> for those who don't know, go check out my Twitter, at Tinkle underscore B Hummel, or my X account, whatever you guys want to refer to it as. Um... <laughs> I, um, yeah, um, I stand by what I said about Ty Gibbs after Saturday. Um, we'll get into that in a moment. Um, we got some rumors on the rumor mill. Um, we've got lawsuits. We've got probably the wildest silly season yet. But, of course, um, we begin with the recap of Watkins Glen. This is going to be a short episode. I was hoping to do my silly season report for IndyCar, I'm going to do that next week when I have a little more time. I'm on an 11-day stretch of work right now, so um, I actually got to get to bed soon. Um, so I want to get this episode out, then I'll get to sleep and have it for you next week, or I'll do a special video. Um, but we begin with the Xfinity at Watkins Glen. Sam Mayer, man, he is becoming quite a road course racer. Um <laughs> And probably a public enemy in the eyes of Ty Gibbs and Joe Gibbs Racing because he dumps Ty Gibbs, then proceeds to pass Sheldon Creed on an oil-covered racetrack to go on to win at Watkins Glen. It's his second career win, his second win of the year. Um, I got no problem with the move. I think, you know, that's fair to say. And let me just pull up the tweet for proof that I said this was a move I've got no problem with. Look. The way Ty Gibbs races people and the way he acts, like, especially after that, you know, he deserves it. So my tweet, of course, um, Sam Mayer hit, so of course, um, Ty Gibbs was unhappy saying congrats on your second win in, in many more starts than me. Um, I was hoping to get my 13th win, um, you know, just being petty, being a little bitch is basically what Ty Gibbs is good at. Um, so I went on to, on X. I'm sorry, I, I've got to get used to it. It's X now. But I went on X and I said, hey, Sam Mayer had to work his way up to this level. Ty Gibbs, you got a free pass. And I added Ty Gibbs on this. You got a free pass through because your grandfather is Joe Gibbs. Quit acting like you worked hard to get there. You're a no-talent, fake religious hack. Um, and you don't have the balls to fight this guy without a helmet. So, and of course, referring back to Martinsville. And I stand by everything I said. Look, I'm going to take heat for this, I'm sure. If this ever goes, you know, big. If this was big, I would be taking a lot of heat for this. But let's face it, it's the truth. It's 100% the truth. And anybody who clearly has a problem with it, you know, you're just not watching is the bottom line because, you know, this kid is not, he's not cup material. He's really not NASCAR material the way he likes to race and the way he likes to act. Um, he makes Austin Dillon look like a guy who earned his way to staying in that number three car for Richard Childress Racing. Okay, so, you know... Don't at me with this. This is the facts, okay? This is what I've witnessed in two years of Ty Gibbs, like, being in, like, the sport. So, if you don't like it, just hit the X button on your browser. Or just swipe up and close your app. Sorry, not sorry. It's the truth. <laughs> um, I don't know how anybody in... To the Ty Gibbs fans out there, you know, all two of them that there are, you know, besides his grandfather, um, don't know how you can support such an asshole, but that's beyond me. And I know I'm supposed to be somewhat impartial and whatnot, but man, this is just going to be named the Ty Gibbs, you know, shit fest, and I'm probably going to get sued for slander, but hey, if the shoe fits... By all means. Um, William Byron, he goes on to collect his fifth win of the season. I didn't think we'd be talking about this. And again, let's go back to the preseason predictions. I said that 
William Byron was not going to make playoffs. <laughs> William Byron must have somehow watched this, or one of his people must have watched this at the beginning of the season and said, this guy doesn't believe in us. Go out there and prove him wrong. Um, <laughs> and he's not only proved me wrong, he's just like curb stomping me at this point with the fifth win. Um, of course, with that, though, he is not a new winner, and therefore, Kevin Harvick and Brad Keselowski have locked their way into the playoffs. They do not have to worry at Daytona. Who does have to worry? Denny Hamlin. <laughs> Um, not because he's at risk, but because he's got a teammate that's outside looking in, and he's got a car that he owns inside the top 16 right now. Okay, so provided that there's no new winner, it'll be between Bubba Wallace and Ty Gibbs in a matchup that Denny Hamlin, there's just no winning for him. Um... Uh, he said something on his podcast, or Jared proposed the question, it's the final lap, you're behind Ty Gibbs and Bubba Walsh, who do you go with? Um, I haven't watched it beyond that, and I've got to log in and see what the answer is. I bet you he snubbed the question, you know, but um, no one wins in this situation. Um, and of course, they'd be in on points provided that there's no new winner, of course. We know guys who have to win. Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman, we know one of the Hendrick cars at minimum is missing the playoffs. Um, you know, AJ's got to win, Justin Haley's got to win. Um, anybody really could take it, and, you know, I'll make my pick later. Um, not just for the race, but for the um, playoff spot. So, stay tuned to the end. I'll have the pick then. Um, but, as far as, you know, Byron, congratulations. And the tip of the cap to uh, Livonia native uh, Rudy Fugel. I did not know Rudy Fugel was from just south of where I am in Livonia, New York. So, love to see the local guy get a win. You know, I didn't want to see Byron win, but I'm happy to see the local guy win any day of the week. Um, all right, let's get on to the rumors here. Um, of course, we begin with 2311 Racing, of course. Um, Denny Hamlin announced earlier this week his contract extension is still up in the air. Of course, there's big negotiations going on, not just with the driver at Joe Gibbs. Now, keep in mind, Denny Hamlin intends to resign with Joe Gibbs Racing which is different from the Kyle Busch situation where both parties weren't on the same page. This one is clearly, you know, Joe Gibbs wants him back, Denny wants to be back, but there's one issue, and it surrounds his cup team at 2311 Racing. Um, of course, Denny Hamlin at the moment um does not have a manufacturer alliance for 2024 for his team. Um, so, of course, now rumors swirling that Denny Hamlin has been talking to Ford executives. Um, silly season just gets sillier every year, I swear. Um... <laughs> Especially in that Joe Gibbs camp. That has got to be the most dramatic camp in the field right now. Um, you know, of course, the deal with Legacy Motor Club taking over as the second... Uh, excuse me, as another Toyota team. It was believed to be an expansion. We know Ford would like to expand. Um, and is looking at 2311. Um... I just got to say, like really got to say, you know, I can't believe that we're talking about the possibility of Denny Hamlin and his team going to Ford. Um, you know, again, I'm sure it's rumors. Um, I believe Front Stretch is the one who reported it. Um, of course, the Front Stretch uh, media, you know, or whatever you want to call it. Um 
this one was a shocker, honestly. Um, don't think I see it happening. I think, you know, unlike Kyle Busch, who was forced out for Grandpa's child there, um, you know... John Hunter's the only one that could take over that ride. <laughs> and it's clear that it looks like he's going to 2311. So, oh, you know. We'll see what happens. That's all I'm going to say. I I don't want to dive into this too much, but I will say I do, I do think that rumor's a little bit out there. Um... I imagine the deal with Toyota is going to come through. I know they've said they've wanted to expand to, you know, possibly a couple more cars. Um, and again, we'll see what happens. Um, this one's the big one. Of course, Alex Pillow has been sued by McLaren for breach of contract, of course, last week. He announced he will not be driving for McLaren or Aero McLaren in 2024 despite signing that long-term deal um zach brown and mclaren had paid alex plo in advance with the full-on anticipation that plo would be driving for the team um going forward so um you know i don't i can't say i didn't see this coming I don't think it's going, based on everything I've heard from Marshall Pruitt and reliable sources, I don't believe that he's going to race for McLaren ever again. Um, this is based on the people I have heard talk, the talking head. Excuse me, sorry, it's been a long week, guys, so bear with me. Um... Yeah, so I don't think we're going to see him ever drive for that team again. What I think is going to happen is McLaren's going to try to get their money back as they should. So, we'll have to see how this plays out. Um, you know, but again, I imagine this means that more than likely, unless a decent... Um, F1 seat opens up, and I think even F1 teams are going to hesitate to sign this guy. I'd imagine that it will be a really long-term deal for Alex Plow and Chip Ganassi Racing. Um, and we'll see what happens. Um, Xfinity Series, or we're going to start with the Truck Series pick for the race at Milwaukee. Um, and I'll begin by picking, let's see, so of course 37 trucks entered for this one, looks like Derek Lemke is going to be <laughs> in, I'm, I'm actually shocked about this, Derek Lemke is going to be in Milwaukee, while his girlfriend Natalie is going to be in Daytona racing, don't know how that's going to work, but I'm going to pick, I feel like Thor Sports heating up. Ty Majeski is as well, but I'm going to go Corey Heim. It's Heim time at the Milwaukee Mile. Um, Xfinity Series, of course, it was announced that Jeb Burton will drive the 22, while Jordan Anderson will take the 27 for the week with Larry McReynolds as the crew chief. I like Jordan Anderson's chances. Don't get me wrong. I really like it. Um, but Justin Haley's in the 10, and I like calling in this situation, so I'm going to go, actually, you know what, I'm going to go outside the box, I'm going to say Daniel Hemrick is going to win at Daytona, I think, you know, they're going to get their crap together after the Atlanta debacle, and they'll get to victory lane. Um, then the Cup Series at Daytona. Ah, oh, man. You guys are going to put me in this spot. So Riley Herbst is going to be driving in the field, too, in the 36, which is shocking. Um, but he is not my pick. Um, 
looking through the entry list. I really don't like Hendrick's chances. I'm going to go with Michael McDowell, to be honest. Ford's been on a good streak lately. Um, McDowell looks like the strongest out of the Ford camp right now. So, I'm going to say Michael McDowell in the 34. He's going to get his second win of the year. Um, as far as who's going to get that bubble spot, I'm going to pick Bubble Waltz. I just think the way things are going with the Joe Gibbs and Toyota negotiations, Denny's going to try to put Bubba in the playoffs and put more money in his pocket versus Joe Gibbs. If all these rumors are true, um, I just think Bubba also is a better plate racer than Ty. So that's another reason I could see that happening. Um, so again, Bubba will also be the 16th seed. Um, yeah, so Bubba will also be the 16th seed. And McDowell will win the race. With that, we want to thank you for watching. Sunday Morning Tinkle will be returning very soon, so stay tuned for that here on the channel. Um, I believe so will No Final Bell be returning as well very soon. Um, and we will be back here on Tuesday for another edition of Out of Turn 4. Until then, goodbye everyone.